শাকিল ভাই যোগ করবে তোমার কিন্তু সাউন্ড ডিসটার্ব করছে সুমন शकिल जॉन कर मैनेजमेंट अफ लोकल नन स्मोल सेल लांग कैंसर स्पेसिकली दिस इज ए बेग टर्म बट टूडे उल फोकस ऑनली ऑन एन स्पेसिफिक यूनिक सीनारियो दैट इज द एन टू डिजीज टेरस Uh, today is our chairperson, uh, Professor M. A. Heiser, our patron, our president, Oncology Club. Uh, today we have a very diversified uh, panel of experts, as you know, uh, Professor uh, Dr. F. M. Kamaluddin Sir, as a professor in radiation oncology, uh, Dr. Fedus Sharir Said, a very famous face in medical oncology, senior consultant and coordinator medical oncology, Never Care Hospital. Uh, Dr. Tofi Kasan Firoz, Assistant Professor of Radiation Oncology. Dr. Jahangir Alo from Medical Oncology Department, and uh, the person always uh, we need in our team that is the thoracic surgeon. Uh, today we have uh, blessed that we have a, a very eminent thoracic surgeon, Dr. Kaji Saiful Islam, Assistant Professor uh, Thoracic Surgery and Disease. So thank you all the panel of experts for joining today's discussion. रेडियोलॉजिस्टिटी Medical oncologists prefer some uh, induction chemotherapy followed by surgery, etc., etc. And whenever the patient uh, went to a uh, thoracic surgeon, uh, he opted for surgery. So this is a, a tough situation regarding this situation. Actually, whose baby is this patient? So at first, I would like to ask this question to our uh, surgical uh, surgical colleagues. Shakil Bhai, if this patient T2 and T2 disease squamous cell carcinoma with this profile, what would be your decision? Would you like to uh, add any further investigation? Uh, how you will proceed, Dr. Shakil? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, N2 disease is, uh, as you mentioned uh, just now, N2 disease 
is such a such a condition that uh, there are uh, opinions about a case of N2 disease and people of uh, uh, people uh, among the surgeons and also among the oncologists are divided in opinions uh, regarding the management of N2 disease. So as far as I know from the guidelines and also according to my practice, I mean, if there is, uh, I mean, all N2 disease uh, falls into the category of uh, 3A. So in these cases, there are opinions, um, uh, there are two opinions, uh, as far as I know, uh, whether you go for uh, upfront surgery first or you go for induction uh, chemotherapy and then followed by uh, surgery or in some cases, chemo radiation. Uh, but in, in my practice also, uh, according to guidelines, uh, uh, if, the, if, the N2 if the N2 station is a single station, single station non-bulky, and the primary primary lesion is resectable uh, in the form of lobectomy mainly, then I think uh, we can go for upfront surgery at this stage. But uh, there is a uh, consistency among, among a large group of people that induction chemotherapy followed by surgery has the best result. And of course, in those cases where I see uh, there, is, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a large tumor, especially uh, that involves the hilum where I cannot perform a R0 resection or if the, if the performance status of the patient or the general condition of the patient or the uh, lung function test shows that uh, patient uh, at this stage patient cannot uh, tolerate the surgery. In that case, I also prefer uh, and then uh, uh, we can uh, a new edge uh, take there. and also you have to take uh, consider in mind that I mean uh, the the entry stage I I presume that in this case in especially in this scenario uh, I mean, uh, his bid is also also a consideration getting whether uh, we go for surgery or not so so Shakil Bhai, particularly in this case what would be your decision. Are you ready for surgery or you want to uh, send this patient to your uh, oncologist colleague? Shakil bhai, can you hear me? <coughs> okay, probably Shakil bhai uh, uh, maybe freeze. Uh, so let me ask this question to uh, my uh, oncologist colleague. Uh, let me uh, start with uh, Dr. Tofi Hassan Firo Joy. Uh, so uh, having this information that is T2N2 disease is squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, Shakil Bhai already mentioned that she, uh, he wants to see performance status, weight loss, comorbidity, etc. Et so would you think that you need further some sorts of investigation before going any concrete, concrete uh, decision, Dr. Tofi? Thank you, Dr. Shubhan. First of all, good afternoon to you all. Firstly, I want to do a busy PET CT scan to evaluate the or stage of the disease. Though you say it is uh, T2N2, that means stage 3A. But most of our patients uh, is uh, unaffordable to do FDG PET CT scan. That's why I want to do at least a CT scan of chest with contrast and also CT scan of abdomen with contrast. But uh, in some extent, CT scan of abdomen with contrast is also costly. So at least ultrasonogram of abdomen and if a patient has any source of uh, metastatic symptoms in brain, then I would go to MRI of brain with contrast. Uh, Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Tofik. Uh, so you you update for FDG, but if financial is an finance is an issue, you would uh, go with some uh, low cost uh, staging uh, staging procedure. But okay. regarding the uh, brain imaging, uh, you uh, uh, you will wait up to the symptoms. So Dr. Jahangir Alam, are you with the same decision with Dr. Tofik, or you want to do MRI irrespective of symptom? Dr. Jahangir Alam.
Dr. Jahangir Alam, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, Dr. Fedor Sharir Saif, can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay, good. Yes, you are audible right now. Please proceed. Yes. Uh, I would like to do a PCT, a visit PCT scan, and uh, 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 MRI brain also. So uh, you want to do MRI, MRI, FDG, PET as a combo, right? Yes. Irrespective of uh, symptom, whether there is symptom uh, positive or not, right? Irrespective of symptom, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, let me ask this question to our senior colleagues. Uh, Dr. Fethus Shari, uh, 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 what is your routine practice? FDG, PET with routine MRI brain? Uh, in our setting in Bangladesh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, for the day. In right. our setting in Bangladesh, because you know uh, uh, we are not very conversant with uh, e bus uh, or in the medicinoscopy, uh, these uh, uh, two methods that uh, our my previous uh, colleagues have uh, discussed, PET CT preferable uh, with MRI brain, uh, if not possible, CT scan of chest and abdomen with contrast with MRI brain. So depending on the uh, situation, but ideal ideal thing would have been IBAS or IBAS guided, you know, uh, biopsy and uh, medinoscopy. But unfortunately, those are not in practice in Bangladesh. So thank you for this. Uh, Dr. Evim Kamaluddin, sir, would you like to add anything, any further investigation? First of all, I want to mention that <coughs> this type of situation, we really need to know what is the real status. As you mentioned, in two is a uh, heterogeneous status. So we need to understand that this is status, patient status. And personally, I think that when we are dealing with a patient like this, when we are planning for a curative treatment, either it is a chemotherapy therapy or surgery, there should not be any excuse of unavailability or unaffordability. So ideally, not ideally, the patient should have a PET CT and also PET CT is not enough. IBAS TBNA, without IBAS TBNA, only PET CT or medical staging is not enough to do for this patient. So that is a standard recommendation. And just for the information, in Bangladesh, it is available. Not widespread, but in limited stage, it is available. And with this stage, we should also do the MRI because we know the MRI brain is important because PET CT may miss some small focus in the brain. So end of the day, when we are trying to save some money of a MRI and we do a big treatment like surgery or chemotherapy, which will cost him money. And end of the treatment, if we find there was a brain focus, so total treatment will be of no value. So I am in favor of doing PET CT and in my brain. And I want to discuss with my surgeon colleague that whether he is ready to operate with a R0 resection. And not only that, during this evaluation, we also need to do the pulmonary function test because whatever radical treatment we do of this type of patient, either surgery or chemoradiotherapy, pulmonary function test is a very important uh, requirement. Unfortunately, that is not a very common practice in our country. And I will be uh, strictly adhering to all the imaging, not sparing anyone at the cost of, for the cost, uh, excuse of cost. Thank so thank you, thank you, Kamal Bhai. You have uh, focused mainly on the very meticulous uh, staging procedure, uh, but there is a question uh, came from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Bhai whether uh, regarding the availability of metastinoscopy and EVAS. So let me hear from our surgical colleagues. Uh, so Shakil Bhai, can you uh, enlighten us a few words regarding these two issues, whether the, this is available or not? Shakil Bhai? So let me support you. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I, I, I didn't, I, I, I had lost connection in, the, in between. I didn't hear the question. Can okay, you please repeat uh, the question? So uh, regarding the availability of medicinoscopy, he was, what are the uh, recent status regarding in, uh, in Bangladesh right now? Okay, if I, if I uh, start from uh, a little back, 
uh, because you already mentioned that this is a T2 N2 M0. You had yes. not mentioned that MX. So I had uh, assumed that it's already proven M0. But if mm -hmm. that's not the case, then we have to search for uh, metastatic lesions anywhere in the body. So FDG PET scan and uh, CT or MRI imaging of the brain uh, in, in the in the international practice, this is a common thing now. And also to to confirm the presence of metastasis in the N2 nodes, you have to do EVAS or mediastinoscopy. And in the recent years, because uh, I, I'm not talking about Bangladesh, because internationally they are uh, more uh, comfortable with EVAS, and this is less invasive than the mediastinoscopy. So they always go for EVAS. In our country, uh, of course, uh, as, as Kamal sir said, it's available in a limited uh, area. So, but ideally, if I if we are discussing about the ideal situation, we must go for FDG PET scan, whole body, brain MRI, or CT scan, and EVAS. Medicinoscopy is also, uh, uh, we are not doing it here, although I have uh, some experience uh, abroad, but we are not doing it here. But EVAS is available, so, I think ideally we, we should go for all, all the staging investigations like FDG PET scan, uh, CT, MRI, brain, and EVAS. And regarding the surgical candidates, as I have mentioned earlier, pulmonary function test and cardiac function test is, uh, is always it's a must. And you have to, from spirometry and other pulmonary function tests, you have to calculate whether this patient can tolerate a lobectomy or a pneumonectomy. So I was... Uh, 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 I didn't mention at that time, regarding surgery, this is another concern of us, that if we had to go for a pneumonectomy in a central lesion, so you have to, you have to consider in, uh, in your mind that there's, there's a central lesion, which is uh, according to uh, the 8 TNM classification, T2 can also be a central lesion, uh, away from the carina, but in that case, we have to sacrifice a lot of functional lung, normal lung tissue. So I have to uh, assess whether this patient, particular any particular patient, will tolerate a pneumonectomy. So, uh, so in that case, as as Kamasa said, spirometry and and cardiac function tests are, uh, are are definitely, and also nutritional status uh, are definitely the investigations that we must do. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shakil Bhai. So let me ask uh, a supplementary question regarding this issue. So if the FDG paid CT, no medicinal notes. So do you think that even in this condition, you do need EBUS? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Because FDG paid can may miss some of the some of the notes, uh, uh, probably 10%, uh, 10 to 15% notes. So in that case, EBUS and uh, medicinal scope, if I see a uh, a, 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 a leaf node in the CT scan, CT image more than one centimeter in, in diameter, then I, I, I must go for EVAS or medistinoscopy, whatever is available. So from, a yeah. so from a radiation oncologist point, yes. I have a question regarding uh, Kamal Bhai answers. If the patient performance status is zero to one, weight loss, there is no weight loss, in last six months, or uh, and also there is no comorbidity, then why should we do MRI of brain with without any okay. symptoms? Okay, 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 Joy. We will discuss these issues in later because we, we have additional information regarding these issues. Let me let, let us discuss our uh, current issues. Uh, so, uh, from surg surgical point of view, they are very focus to do a medicinal staging before going surgery. From a radiation oncologist point of view, we are going to irradiate the medicina. Yeah. So do you think that you need EBUS along with FDG if a medicina is, uh, medicina is FDG negative? Dr. F. M. Kamal Abdi, sir. Look, uh, even we are not doing surgery, but we need to know the staging is very important. If we don't know the proper staging, we cannot really treat the proper way. We know we always target on the FDG EBIT nodes, but as Shakil said, the 10% of the nodes may be missed even by PET CT. So after doing the EBAS TBNA, if we really know the exact status, then it will be easy for us to re do judgment to the patient. Otherwise, unknowingly, we will miss the target and end of the patient, end of the treatment, we will see there is a infield or 
marginal failed failure that's why even we don't do a surgery we should get the 100% information as much as possible before going for a radical treatment whether it's a surgery or it's a chemo radiotherapy so thank you so this is a very important information uh, those who are hearing from us that the investigations that fdc page along with brain imaging uh, with preferably, preferably with mri and we, we do need this evas or any sort of medicinoscopy before going in a radical approach so here comes the question of dr joy so whether in asymptomatic question asymptomatic patient do we need any further brain imaging or not so especially if you see focused that, on weight loss okay no issues no issues we are coming so you could see that the espo guidelines their level of evidence is not very high stage 3b but they have mentioned that you should go for a brain imaging with mri so i have given you a very practical study this is done by a dutch group they have done fdc pet ct scan and along with that same time they have dedicated brain imaging setup so from their scans they found and all these patients are asymptomatic the stage 3 disease they found that even with fdc pet ct scan normal they found with dedicated ct scan imaging contrast test additional 7% and when they add mri they found additional 5% so in asymptomatic patient if this is normal you could have around 12% patient 7% by ct scan and additional 5% by mri scan asymptomatic patient so i think probably from this study you could find your idea <laughs> so i hope uh, dr fm kamal this sir need not to explain you a lot but uh, i i think that we should go for mri imaging in every patient it is in particularly for stage 3 uh, so uh, these are the two issues that is also dis uh, discussed that the uh, pulmonary function test uh, so uh, again come to shakil bhai so whether you are focused on fva or dlca or both yeah I, i'll 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 go for both i'll go for both and and i have to right so this is the guidelines uh, you you need to do the both of the test because you could find that fev on is very good but dlco is very suboptimum so as per the espo guidelines we do both and it should be more than 80% before going in medical approach so you can see that the ncc guidelines all these tests that we have already discussed that the pulmonary function test bronchoscopy pathological medicine evaluation if dissipate and brain mri should be done now come to again this question we have got this answer from our surgical colleagues uh, shakil bhai is decided uh, so even uh, even it is into disease if it is not bulky a single station disease uh, he is ready for surgery uh, so again ask this question to medical oncologist uh, dr jahangir so what would be your decision dr jahangir in this situation yes t2 n2 all these tests are done patient uh, performance status is good 62 years smoker what should be your uh, pra practice uh, according to ncsn guide guideline if medical patient is medically fit uh, induction chemotherapy uh, option is induction chemotherapy followed by uh, surgery or induction chemotherapy chemo radiotherapy followed by surgery if medically not fit uh, definitive concurrent chemo radiotherapy So, Dr. Jangir Alam, we 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 want to hear from you. What you are going to do with this patient? The patient is in your chamber. And uh, uh, I uh, here I do uh, induction chemotherapy uh, and uh, follow the surgery. And because as because you are a medical oncologist, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let me uh, let me hear from your boss, a medical oncologist boss from Professor Sharia's side. So, side yes, by yes. what you what you should do. uh personally i would go for concurrent chemo radiotherapy for yeah. by surgery so in, in any circumstances you would prefer induction chemotherapy is there any special uh, situation uh not that i know of kamaluddin can sir, just <laughs> shed Thank some you. light on it so, so before going to kamaluddin sir there is another radiation oncologist dr tofik so what you should do in uh, thank you shuman in case of t2 n2 i will go concurrent chemo radiation okay but uh, 
in case stage three T four N zero, then I will go for induction chemotherapy. That is another another portion. But in that case, I will go for definitely concurrent chemoradiation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joy. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Ethan Kamlodi, sir, what would be your decision? <clears throat> Shaman, uh, this is not a straight cut answer, yes or no. So ideally, what should be done? This should be discussed because every, what Shakil was telling, into itself for the location and the number and the size of the tumor, it varies. So we need to sit together with our surgeon colleagues and the medical oncology colleagues and think that what can be done. Say, for example, uh, somebody is tempted to give new adjuvant chemotherapy. Unfortunately, there is no data supporting that neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery is giving a survival benefit. URTC trial have taken inoperable cases but could not show survival benefit. We know in lung, surgery always give us offer a better survival, but in into disease, surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all combined even could not give better. So this is one challenge. Number two, after doing all the images, even doing TBA, TBA, uh, TBA, 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 surgeon land sometimes in surprise. So even they plan that they will do a R0 resection, they fail. So this is a tricky situation. So in our country perspective, if my surgeon colleague is extremely confident that there is a possibility of surgery, then we can discuss of surgery. Otherwise we can go out with chemoradiotherapy because as I mentioned, till now no data is showing any superiority. Before people used to think that sequential chemotherapy, surgery, radiotherapy is giving some benefit, which is now proved wrong. So by giving so many modalities, maybe we are offering some toxicities rather than survival. So that's why other than a very clean cut case, this type of patient is a ideal, could be an ideal candidate for chemoradiotherapy. So that is the take now. But as I mentioned, if we all sit together and see that there is a huge chance, then we can go. But regarding the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery, this sequence is a recommendation to see the assessment, but unfortunately that is not a very common practice in our country. And personally, Shakil may make some comment, we are not very comfortable also with neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery in our country for some reason. The, that is not a very common culture. So thank you. So thank you, Kamal Bhai. We, we will take further, uh, further comments from our surgical colleagues. Before that, I want to uh, give you an idea, but this is the same question. This is asked in the NCCN guidelines among 100 members. And you could find that even in this situation, around 90% patients, 90% surgeons would prefer for surgery if the end to new nodes is in single station and smaller than three centimeters. Even the size is less than three centimeters, some of them are interested for uh, surgery, even multiple station, but if the size is less than three centimeters. Most of them are preferred for EVAS and new adjustment chemotherapy followed by surgery, you could see that the percentage is quite low. So Shakil Bhai, let me ask this question in a different way. Is there any unique condition or a, a in a situation whether you are not ready for surgery, what is the condition of unrestrictability? I mean, are you are you referring to, to this particular patient, T2N2? No, no, no. T yes, T2N2 disease. You are, you are, we are not uh, discussing about the uh, operability, the, the lung function test, all, all these discussions are done. So your surgical point of view, what is the condition you are not going to operate this patient? So as I said earlier, I have to look for a R0 resection margin. Now, uh, regarding the N2 disease, if I am, if I am uh, preoperatively, the N2 is positive histopathologically for, for, for which you have to do EBAS or mediastinal stenoscopy, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or maybe N2 is, uh, N2 is incidentally found out to be, sometimes that can also happen if I get a, uh, more than one centimeter size and two uh, station lymph node, I, I send it for frozen section biopsy and it comes positive. Then again, there are uh, difference of opinion among the surgeons. Some of them stops uh, uh, the procedure uh, at once and go for new adjuvant therapy and some uh, uh, proceeds and uh, then uh, afterwards they send the patient for adjuvant therapy. So in my, in my case, surgical, in the, in, the, in the case of surgical point of view, I have to uh, 
uh, see whether I have to plan prior to surgery, whether I'm going for lobectomy or pneumonectomy. So pneumonectomy cases or uh, candidates are very uh, small in number because uh, it's very difficult to find uh, a patient when uh, he comes to you after suffering for three or four uh, months and having weight loss and weakness uh, and, and other issues uh, who can uh, tolerate a pneumonectomy. So then I uh, prefer a peripheral lesion where the tumor is surrounded by lung parenchyma so that I can go for a clean cut uh, lobectomy. But the tumor is, if, if it is central, uh, a central lesion and if it is involving the uh, pericardium or the phrenic nerve, or maybe esophagus vertebral body, uh, then it is uh, difficult to achieve uh, 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 R0 resection in all the cases. But if it is a, uh, if it is involving the chest wall, I can uh, take out one or two ribs uh, along with the lesion. That is okay. But if it is a central lesion and I cannot, uh, if I can assess preoperatively that I cannot go for a R0 resection, or if there are multiple uh, N2 station, which even I cannot confirm then I, I think I would uh, go for neurogen therapy. So do you think if it is a single station node into disease, the node is bulky, four centimeter or in more than that. So you opted for surgery? I mean, personally, I will opt for, uh, no, I will opt for uh, induction therapy first. So then what will your optimum limit? Uh, three, two, one. What so three, optimum limit? three, three, so three, three, three centimeter two. may be the highest here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shakil Bhai. So these are the all available options. We have already discussed the definitive concurrent chemotherapy, induction chemotherapy, plus minus RT or surgery. This is as per the NCCM guidelines. So this is already discussed by our surgical colleague, Shakil Bhai, that if incidentally find, uh, <coughs> incidental findings during surgery, uh, some of the uh, sur surgical guidelines, the SMO guidelines, they could say that you can continue the surgery or you can omit this surgery. But if it is potentially resectable, all the well options that the induction chemotherapy followed by surgery, induction chemoradiation therapy followed by surgery or concurrent chemoradiation therapy is the valid option. But it is if it is unresectable, the concurrent chemoradiation therapy will be probably the treatment of choice. So again, this question, so we have decided to go uh, our patients with concurrent chemoradiation therapy or, uh, or combined combination therapy. So let me ask this question to Dr. Joy. So how you are going to proceed concurrent or sequential chemoradiation therapy? Uh, I would like to go concurrent rather than Thank sequential. You. Thank you. So Dr. Jahangir? Yes, I, I agree with uh, to Dr. Tulsi, concurrent chemoradiation. Okay. So we have all the, all the evidence that is the better analysis is done by the operant at all. This is a very poor data, but it is, it is the backbone. You could see that the Concurrent chemoradiation therapy proves that it is a better modality of treatment in, in, in case of overall survival issues. Uh, so, but Shumar, one minute. Yes, come on, thank you. I think uh, when we are thinking about the cost regarding the imaging, modality is also important. We know concurrent is a better modality than sequential, but when we consider in our country perspective, cost is manageable, but performance status is not manageable. So we need to decide whether the patient is a candidate for concurrent or not. Chasing a patient with concurrent and not completing the treatment or not able to give all the chemotherapy is not a good option rather than going for sequential because the difference is not very big. So we need to take a judicious decision whether the patient is a real candidate for concurrent. If then we should go for concurrent, but if not, then definitely we should go for sequential rather than chasing with concurrent. Definitely. Thank you, Kamal Bhai, because uh, person status is a big issue and proper patient selection is a very uh, key, uh, key, uh, key key decision, I, I should say, that the proper patient selection is a very important. Uh, so, uh, Fiddus, share your side, sir. Uh, current chemoradiation therapy, what would be your chemotherapy selection? Weekly, free weekly, tablets, single agent, what kind of chemotherapy you do prefer? In concurrent setup, yeah, depending on uh, depending on the performance status of the patient and renal function and uh, you know um, age and all these things, so you know if the patient is a fit patient uh, with good renal function and everything with uh, uh, no neuropathy, 
I would go for uh, uh, if we go for chemotherapy. I go for uh, texel, preferably pectyl texel with uh, platinum, preferably cisplatin. If so for some reason cisplatin is not suitable for the patient, then go for carboplatin. And uh, uh, I have tried, you know, both weekly and uh, also three weekly uh, in my patients. But majority of the cases, uh, I found that, you know, this weekly schedule, which is a low dose schedule, uh, is well tolerated by the patient. So I prefer weekly for my patients. Thank you for uh, this. That is also my personal experience. Uh, so Kamal Bhai, uh, do, do you have any different opinion or you are uh, I, with us? Uh, initially, we used to do weekly cisplatinum. Then we moved to Peckley Carbo weekly because as uh, Firdos said that the compliance is better and the data was quite strong. But uh, there are some uh, series they are showing that cisplatinum is doing better than carboplatin. That is a different debate. But till now, I think the standard recommendation is to go for weekly packly uh, 50 milligram per meter square and AUC2 carboplatin because we know that in lung cancer, this type of patient, especially when we have a medicinal mass, so esophagitis is a big issue. So carboplatin is a bit safer than cisplatinum for esophagitis. And esophagitis becomes a challenge for continuation of the treatment, especially if you look at the, all the studies, they prefer the 65% plus uh, uh, of the per patient should get at least 65% of the planned chemotherapy to achieve the outcome. If we don't give the chemotherapy, then we may not get the real outcome. So Tecli Carbo uh, still is, the, I think, the gold standard. So thank you, Kamal Bhai. I know that you are a believer of carboplatin, but as you know, all the uh, Erzuvent data, that is the ANITA trial, the CLGB trial, they, they shows that the Erzuvent setup, that is the curative setup, uh, probably cisplatin is the better player than carboplatin. And you could see that the total outcome depend on the cumulative cisplatin dose. But if the dose is more than 300 milligram per meter square, probably we could find a better overall outcome. But it is individualized. And of course, the toxicity is a major issue when we are playing with this concurrent chemo radiation therapy. Uh, so this is the this is very selective question for the radiation oncologist uh, panelist. So uh, Dr. Joy, what is your dose in concurrent setup? I will go uh, 60 gray in 30 fraction. So you are not a believer of higher dose? No, no. no. So Kamal Bhai, what is your dose? So dose change with time. It was once 66, then went up to 78. But unfortunately, finally, it came down this Lancet paper 2015. They have shown that uh, 60 is quite fair enough with concurrent. So now 60 with concurrent chemotherapy is the standard for non-small cell locally advanced lung cancer. Uh, so th this is the this is the statement which shows that how the paper um, forced us to change our practice. So when Kamal Bhai came back from America, he was a strong believer of higher dose. Higher dose. Even sometimes we had tried to more, go escalate the dose more than 70 gray. But now we know that the 60 gray is the standard dose. This is the, done by the RTOG American guys. And this is a very important paper that the pushing dose is not going to give us more. Uh, the toxicity. So now uh, uh, this question to the medical oncologist guy. Uh, so at first I would like to ask this question to Dr. Jahangir. Concurrent CTRT done. Stays, uh, we are talking about this unique case, 62 years, good performance status. Uh, so after concurrent CTRT, would you like to go further? What is your decision? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to further. Uh, there is an excellent drug. Uh, so you, you want to try with Durvalumab, right? Yes. So before going to Durvalumab, would you like to test any biomarkers or uh, you don't need to do it? Yes, I uh, would like to do PDL1. So if PDL1 comes less than 1%, should you go with Durva or not? Uh, less than 1%, uh, I, uh, I'm not agree. Okay, so Fedus Vain? Uh, 
well, both in the EGFR and uh, PDL one uh, uh, should be done. And if uh, PDL one is less than one, then you know uh, there is no uh, definite uh, uh, advantage giving durable MF. But if it is one percent or above, anything one percent or above, then durable MF is a very good uh, drug, and it gives both progression-free survival benefit and overall, even overall survival benefit, uh, and which is very good. And uh, if EGFR are positive, there is a debate, you know, whether we go should go for uh, darvalumab or not. Um, uh, there, there are, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, EGFR is another issue where darvalumab is not usually given if it is positive. So, uh, this part, probably you were talking about uh, irrespective of the stage three, uh, three year status, not right. particularly in this case, because right. Uh, right. after after concurrency TRT, uh, EGFR might not be the player because we have the uh, Azura trial. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, trial. okay, that's, after, that's after the, after the I agree with you. I agree with you. I was, I was talking about 3B, not okay. 3A. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, here PDL1 is the issue for 3A. So after the concurrent CTRT, concurrent CTRT, uh, we do have only the PDL status. But if the patient upfront surgery, then we could do the EGFR after based on this Adora trial. If if mm -hmm. it is easier for mutation, and then then we could have a different discussion. But our patient already treated with uh, CTRT. Now, what we should do? Uh, so Fedus Bhai in favor for uh, PDL one test, and if it is negative, then he is not ready for Durvalumab. Uh, so, Dr. Joy, what would be your decision? Thank you, Shuman. Though uh, darvalumab is not available in our country, so I would go uh, for uh, another option uh, regarding uh, uh, chemotherapy or any else. Okay, so you, you opted for maintenance or consolidated chemotherapy, right? Yeah. But but the, but the data shows that the consolidated chemotherapy are not going to give you any overall survival advantage or any progression free survival advantage. So it is already tested, and it it only ad, uh, adds you only some toxicities. So I think you should focus on that area also. Uh, so uh, Kamal Bhai, we know that you have some experience treating with patients with Durvalumab. Uh, so, what your experience and what your uh, what your take regarding this PDL one, the practice change for the specific. This three A stage chemoradiotherapy patient was a, a nightmare for us because once we have treated the patient, we couldn't do anything. As you said, consolidation chemotherapy was tried with a very big enthusiasm and it failed to give any survival benefit. And we have found that most of the time there was partial response, not complete response. And hardly we could do surgery, we could do anything. So this specific trial is the first trial which brought some hope of 15% PFS on first two years study. And then on four years, they have shown both PFS and OS benefit. And if you look at the outcome, irrespective of PDL1, the recommendation was that within one to 43 days of the radiotherapy, if the patient lesion is stable, they have gone for durvalumab. Initially, it was two weekly. Now they said four weekly is also okay for one year. So that is a standard recommendation, irrespective of uh, I mean histopathology and also any st receptor status. Yes, there is a paper published in Annals of Oncology with postdoc analysis that PDL1. They have tried to see that what is the effect of PDL1. Unfortunately, this is a post-hoc analysis. They could only find out 65% of the tissue to do the PDL1, not all 700 patients. And then if you go to subclass, the PDL1 score less than one is only 130. And the duration is very small. So what they have shown, they have shown that irrespective of PDL1 status, all the group have PFS benefit, but the OS benefit was not significant in PDL score less than one. But this is not a conclusive thing. Even they concluded that this small amount of uh, patient number and postdoc analysis is a food for thoughts, but is not a conclusion. So maybe the Pacific two that they have designed, they have designed it based on PDL one status. That will give us more uh, specific clue 
that who will be the best beneficial but till now today the recommendation is that if a patient is treated with chemoradiotherapy with a stable disease after chemoradiotherapy patient should be offered the adjuvant durvalumab for one year and availability affordability is a second thing it is a totally relative term because that is the gold standard thank you uh, so kamal bhai uh, don't you think that after getting that uh, the 60 grade radiation therapy along with concurrent chemo radiation therapy most of the patients uh, complains about esophagitis pneumonitis is there so how you are going to challenge these issues uh, within a 14 days period so sometimes we face that even the patients are not not ready enough to drink some water so how you are going to introduce this new immunotherapy within 14 14 days after concurrent ctrt come on that is a interesting thing immunotherapy is not a toxic drug like chemotherapy that is the very uh, interesting thing by default we are very scared of immunotherapy immunotherapy apparently is not a toxic drug but if there is some ae then it is difficult to manage we need to go for steroid and other things so with my very limited experience i had two patients i didn't face any challenge with this thing number one but yes every patient is not a candidate they may not be fit they may not be affordable but this is a discussion and till now the whatever the data if you look around the world real world data durvalumab in stage 3 is doing great really great and not only on this you will see that so many studies are coming out with durvalumab with different combination so as i mentioned i was scared of io in lung but with this treatment i found that and uh, surprisingly it was not that rather cisplatin is much more difficult to handle in this type of patient than io in this type so thank you kamal bhai for sharing your ex personal experience and so uh, this is a this is a real game changer you could see that the stage 3 disease stage 3a disease we are talking about 50% overall survival at 4 years so which are, so which was ne never seen earlier so after this specific trial uh, this uh, we can consider it as a practice changing paper and all these issues all discussed by uh, kamal bhai that the pdl1 this post hoc analysis shows that if it is less than 1% probably it is not going to work but that the specific 2 will give us the result as it was not a stratification factor but uh, in a resistant country we definitely we can consider these issues uh, so far we have data that post hoc analysis we could say, we could say that the more the pdl score the better the total outcome but we cannot conclude that the those who are not having this pdl score uh we should not going to give this development probably that strength doesn't provide by the specific study but two things this is uh, this is the denominating factor you could see that the platinum when we are going to treat our patients with the intention to development probably we should give platinum as concurrent setup because you could say that the platinum group does better and another issue is that the time those who have introduced this durvalumab within 40 days we found that they responded better uh so new arts when ccrt uh is there anyone who are in favor of this terminology petros bhai new arts when ccrt uh Uh, new are given concurrent chemo radiation therapy yes i i i will come back to this question by, by surgical colleagues later but uh, at first i would like to hear from our oncologist colleague right well you know uh, uh you know if we are talking about a potentially resectable uh, lung cancer which is uh, 3a then you know ccrt is the uh, for me you know it, it is the standard as new are given followed by surgery and so, uh, uh, so you were in favor of this new adjuvant ccrt after that you will plan for uh, surgery yeah that that i would do for my patient so uh, have you done any case i have done only one case so far with ccrt with ccrt new adjuvant with ccrt, with CCRT. Okay. Okay, only okay. one case unfortunately <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, no, no, but also also no ibas or uh, done you know only pet ct was done so that's that's the case but we are really keen to uh, get the feedback from you regarding this case uh, so uh, dr joy new adjuvant ccrt i do not interested about this 
Okay, you are not interested at all. Okay, Dr. Jangir. Dr. Jangir Alam, can you hear me? Okay, before going to the discussion, uh, let me give some idea. This is, this is the nice guidelines published in 2019. Uh, particularly our case, they have included this CCRT and they showed that CCRT followed by surgery improves progression free survival. Not only progression free survival, they found that some overall survival. So, Shakil Bhai, do you have any experience treating uh, with surgery after concurrent chemo radiation therapy? Shakil Bhai. Uh, thank you. No, I, I have uh, uh, actually I have very limited experience, maybe one or two cases, but not uh, CCRT. Uh, they came uh, after induction chemotherapy but, and, 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 they, and the surgery went well. But as Kamal sir uh, mentioned earlier, uh, somehow uh, patients after receiving new adjuvant therapy do not come to us or maybe they are going to other surgeons or maybe they go for upfront surgery first and then uh, then totally they are getting the chemo radiation. That's do it. Think, I only had so done two do you, cases, I think. So do you so think far. that uh, uh, do you think that it, it can be a reasonable approach, particularly for this NT case, because it is already in guidelines, but can it be in, in investigational here in Bangladesh? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so because because in 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 all of the three A N two cases, uh, it must be approached in a multimodality way. So whether uh, in our in our setup, uh, I don't know if if you are uh, interested in going for a CCRT and the outcome is better, we can we can go for some studies. And definitely, other than that, I I prefer induction chemotherapy first and then go for uh, surgery in these cases. But CCRT can also be a, a good option. So come on, don't you think that the forty-five day twenty-five fraction along with uh, two two cycles of chemotherapy is the need to side? Uh, why, why we are not operating this question? There is two challenges there. We know that for Tancos tumor, chemoradiotherapy, new adjuvant, followed by surgery, global standard. Unfortunately, still that is not a good practice in our country. I don't know why, as Sakil said, we cannot make a good team yet, probably. So when we are treating, I don't know whether it is going to be new adjuvant or a radical. Because if the patient, say for example, after 45, is not fit for surgery, what is going to happen? Call back, give the remaining radiotherapy or hold it. So there are some technical issues that happens because, you know, we are not in an ideal situation all sitting together in the same center. So this is number one. Number two, patient. Patients sometimes don't opt for it. After going for a huge treatment like chemoradiotherapy, they are not always ready for going for another surgery. So that is another challenge. But definitely as there are some data we can try, but I don't know why. Culturally, uh, Shakil is an exception. Man majority of our colleagues are comfortable with chemo followed by surgery, but not radiation followed by surgery. It is true, not only in lung, also in esophagus, we found that they are more comfortable to have a new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery. But whenever we are putting the patient on new chemo radiotherapy, then there are some zone of discomfort works. I don't know why, but definitely 45-25 is a good option, but here you can look that the top, there is an issue. They have used etoposite. If you look at the toxicity in lung, etoposite cisplatin is the most toxic concurrent protocol compared to Peclicago. So that could be another challenge. So timing, if you give a neoadjuvant therapy and patient is not fit and cannot go for surgery. So there are some issues, but definitely I am. I think that today, 2021, we should not bring any excuse. We should try to give the best to our patient and get a better outcome. Uh Thank you. Uh, so this is the new adjuvant chemo radiation therapy data. This is a very uh, old data that I in 2009. You could see that the chemotherapy, that the triple model of this treatment, chemotherapy, RT followed by surgery, that the blue line, the soup, uh, is above, in, above the green line, that is the dual model of this treatment. But when we come to see the overall survival, you could see the triple model of this treatment comes down. But after that, they have done an interim analysis. They found that the surgery, the mode of surgery is the uh, decisive matter. So when they have triple modality treatment with lobectomy, they, they found that this group do better versus pneumonectomy. So mode of surgery might be a playmaker. 
So, uh, Shakil Bhai, any comments regarding these issues? Yes, thank you. Now, I, I think I think uh, it, it all depends on the performance status of the patient and the and, and the and the pulmonary function uh, and comorbidity and general nutrition and and um, other uh, other factors. It's it's not uh, resection per se. Uh, I think that's why they they have found out uh, better results in case of in case of lobectomy. But definitely, uh, this is a case by case uh, uh, situation because. Uh, if you want to achieve R0 resection, in certain cases, you have to go for pneumonectomy if, if the situation permits. So uh, that's what I think that the, that the outcome for lobectomy is better because, because other issues uh, come into effect here. So thank you. Thank you, Shakil Bhai. We are at the end of our discussion. Uh, so let me ask this question to uh, very individually at first, Dr. Joy. Induction surgery port. Yes, no. Dr. Joy, can you hear me? Dr. Jahangir, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Induction chemotherapy, surgery, plus port. Yes or no? Yes. So you are in favor yes. of this sequence, induction chemotherapy, surgery, followed by post-operative radiation therapy? Yes. yes. Okay. Can this yes. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, keen on this uh, 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 thing, you know. If the patient is fit enough, I'd go for concurrent chemotherapy, but not with cisplatin atoposite. <laughs> you know, uh, as Kamal has mentioned, that uh, those are, you know, very toxic. So if the patient can, uh, if everything goes fine, and if the patient is eligible, I'd go for concurrent chemoradiation followed by surgery. And then, you know, will come the point of darvalumab or not. So Kamal Bhai, in, in this sequence, so in any, uh, in, any, in, any, in any unique condition, patient is again, not fit. Again, Shuman, if you ask me two years back, I was in favor of giving port because I'm a believer of radiotherapy. But the art lung trial have shown that adjuvant radiotherapy, even in positive margin, is not giving any survival benefit, but rather giving toxicity. So no, you know what we are looking at? We are not only looking at the survival of the patient, also looking at the quality of life. So we should, once upon a time, we have been escalating the treatment. More was good. Now say more is not always good. We are not de-escalating the treatment. So in lung cancer now, after the art lung trial, port is totally almost obsolete, except very special case. So I will not be in favor of going for any port unless a very classical bulky node or very frank positive margin. And even I will discuss with the patient that we are not very sure that whether we can offer you any benefit or not. So that's why everything is okay, but probably not, no more port in lung. So thank you, thank you, Kamal Bhai. The, after the lung trial, a port might be an issue. Uh, since years we are discussing about the, about the role of port in into disease, but after the uh, port, after the lung trial, we found that uh, giving port uh, not only beneficial, but also it, it causes detrimental effect rather than giving any benefit. So probably this port issue is solved. Uh, so you could see this is the situation all over the world with this N2 disease, no consensus yet, NP, fitness, no preference, surgery, RT, all of these options are here. So all the world is still very confusing regarding these issues. So we have to wait in this pioneer trial, whether they have tried to see that is there any role of surgery particularly in this situation or not so that's all from me from this guy from this today's discussion and now we have some question in the chat box so let me uh, uh, can i can i just make one comment please uh, please just a small right. point yes, uh, yes, uh, just please. a small point as, as kamal sir has earlier uh, uh, mentioned about the uh, response for uh, neo-given radiotherapy rather than chemotherapy in in uh, in uh, some of the surgeons because I think they believe that radiation causes more fibrosis which uh, makes it difficult for the dissection and uh, post-radiation surgery. So they might think that uh, neo-given chemotherapy will uh, cause less fibrosis and the surgery uh, afterwards uh, will be more easy. 
I, but but I think I think uh, chemotherapy also causes some kinds of addition and, and fibrosis. Uh, Kamal sir can can like fo- fo- can put some light on it. Yes, as I mentioned, Shakil, probably that is the thought process. Still, it is practice, but I am sure once we start doing, we will find out that the problem is not there. Okay, so there's there's there, there's a question in the chat box. As I think Shakil can answer this question. Uh, so, what are the centers where IBUS is available in Bangladesh? At this moment, as, as far I know, uh, we have a IBUS uh, uh, equipment in in uh, National Chest Hospital, but it's it's out of order right now. So, uh, as far as I know, the the only one that is functioning is in in Bangladesh Specialized Hospital. And Dr. Murtaza Khair and Dr. Zaki Rustin Shorka, they are performing a, at this time uh, the EBUS TBNA. They are, they are both pulmonologists. Okay. Uh, so, uh, another question uh, anyone can answer this question. Uh, what about in NACT followed by concurrent chemo radiation therapy? Kamal Bhai, anyone can uh, pick up this question? NACT followed by CTRT. So normally uh, it is sequential. If it is NACT, then RT, not NACT followed by CTRT. So that is not a standard. So if we select, either we do concurrent chemo radiotherapy or we do sequential chemotherapy followed by radiotherapy. There is no recommendation of giving new adjuvant chemotherapy then CTRT. It is not recommended. Uh, so another question about the combination venerolabin plus platinum in squamous cell carcinoma, uh, because. These are the trials that is an adjuvant setup. Mineralbin, platinum is not uh, never tri- probably never, uh, less tried in RTCT. Uh, so when we are going to radiation with mineralbin, that is the area of concern. Particularly, mineralbin platinum is the combination which are used in adjuvant setup. Uh, if adenocarcinoma, what should be the protocol? Uh, I think the protocol should be same, particularly in stage three a disease. Uh, is there any role of pre-matrix in adenocarcinoma non small cell cancer as a concurrent setting? Kamal, Bhai, would you like to answer? Or yes. Yes. There is recommendation that in concurrent setup, adeno pre-matrix set is a stand- even we don't practice, but it is a level one recommendation. It can be used. Okay. Induction of dual volume of adjuvant in which solution complete response partial partial response or stand- uh, stable disease. Uh, so as per the Pacific, you did at least you should have uh, stable disease. If, if it is not progressed within 14 days, then you can proceed. Uh, unresectable, no progression, PS01, this is the answer. Okay, so this is all about the question. And now I am going to back to our chairperson, Professor M.A. Heiser, to uh, give comments regarding today's discussion. Professor M.A. Heiser, today's chairperson. <clears throat> I got very much confused. Discussions. We go. studies are being done. But no study in our country. That is the problem. So decide yourself. Make a team. Start studying. Studying. studying then we shall be able to say our our people, our people. If till then I shall request all of you to prescribe cannabis oil. That is the only without any other chemotherapy or therapy or anything. Cannabis oil can keep your patient well at least six, seven years. One thing as I cut file is here. the Siemens company has developed a CT scan. Say the photon counting city, but <coughs> quantum technology. I say there is, is a very good, this is a very good picture. Even the small nodules can be counted. They have only five or six. Saracenia, they are going to present <coughs> this. This, if this is correct, it will be. Help us in many ways. We not have to go for the pet city or all these things. Maraya and this. Neotum alpha. Neotum alpha. 
and wishing you much more. Thank you very much. We had a glad, very nice discussion. We thank you all very much. Try to continue all these things like this. Be happy that you are taking learning. I'll be more happy if you take take up test protocols like this amongst your beginning group. One group they have already formed, as I know, colon cancer, colorectal cancer. Probably our manager children will be able to say about it. He is doing this. Hopefully, inshallah, in your future, one thing you keep your mind about spiritual wealth. Don't forget. Help in many ways to your patients. Calm your patients, calm down your patients. Tranquility to it. Spiritual wealth. Keep your patients towards the last one. We'll just uh, down these things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, at the same time, I would like to give a special thanks to our scientific partner, uh, Sanofi, for their support for organizing this uh, program. And there will be a series regarding these lung cancer issues. And so we will inform you again uh, our next, next, next date, next topics. You will be informed by mail. Uh, so, uh, since then, I would like to give a special thanks to all our uh, faculties for the, giving their precious time. So, hopefully, we'll see you again in the same platform. So, till then, stay safe because Omicron is there. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Sir, can we end the session? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.